being creative is part of what being a human being is. When the Bible says that we are created in God's image, it means many things, but one of them is because God is a creator. Human beings are expected to be creators. In fact, that's one of the reasons why if you are told not to work and just sit idle and enjoy your parents' uh, inheritance, you soon may end up being mentally unstable. Because God has created us to be creative. And work, working gives you opportunity to be creative. Whatever the job you do, it may look very routine, but you have to think how to do something. So being creative is part of who we are. And we should always aim at being creative with God's help. So that our products will be different. You may be cooking in the kitchen, but you have to think, this is the way I was taught by my mother to cook. Is there any way of improving how I make the Kenyan dish ugali? Is there an another way of doing it that could make it even better? That's what being creative are. You don't just repeat what you have always done. You always keep improving it. Or, alternatively, what you are after is food. But must food be just the thing your grandmother was eating? Is there another way of getting the, the proteins, the starches? It's important to understand our nature is to be creative. And it's people who know we are created in the image of God. We should seek to always be creative. In Numbers chapter 8, verse 4, we read, this is how the lamps, the, the lamp stand, stand was made. It was made of hammered gold. From its base to its blossoms, the lamp stand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord had shown Moses. In, this, in, the, in the Pentateuch, the five books, the tabernacle is mentioned many times. And here we are discussing how the items in the tabernacle were to be made. Man is creative, and that is good. But he needs to be aware of what instructions the master creator has given. And you are not free to be creative in a way that contradicts his creation. Here, what they are after is a lamp stand where they can place the lamp to light up the temple. He can come up with his own ideas of how to make the lamp stand. But you are told that Moses, when up in the mountain, was given a design by God. Is it me you want to worship? This is where I want to be worshipped. There will be a lamp stand to be made like this and this and this. And so the Bible is telling us the lampstand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord had shown Moses. So in our creativity, do we seek to know the mind of God? Do we seek to do things God's way? Do we seek to be creative within the parameters and controls of God's word and God's instruction? Or do we feel we are free spirit? We can be creative in whichever way you want. So, being creative is good, but it has a limit, is what we are learning this week. That there are things you do God's way. For example, you can't start worshipping God creatively so that you do it your own way. What you feel like doing, you do. It's clear that God won't be worshipped. Yes, God wants to be your friend. Yes, there is something called the fear of the Lord. So it's a way of worshipping him that shows him that awesome respect. So don't be creative. I know there are worship teams that are trying to be as creative as possible. They see Doblo 
uh, is a good way of dancing. And so you go to dance before the Lord and you want to introduce Doblo in church. You want to swing your midsection like you are being sexually provocative to the people of God. And you ask, no, 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 we are being artists. We are being creative. And the Bible is reminding us. There's a way of worshipping. There's a way of making lampstand for the worship place. And you can only make it using the pattern that was shown you, that was shown to Moses. That's why we read the Pentateuch, to read what was Moses shown. So those of us who want to participate in God's service, do not serve him creatively to mean doing things that are not in the design that Moses had. So you, you need to be aware there are limits. You can't just do everything and anything. Check the scriptures. Now be creative within the parameters that God has given. So we have two possibilities. One possibility is where you, 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 you don't want to be creative. You do things the same way even when it is not right. You don't ask questions. You ever heard of the story of this, uh, this young girl who asked the mother why whenever they cook, they cut a, piece, a little piece of meat and throw away. And the mother said, because that's the way we have always done it. So the young girl insisted, but why do, why do you do it? Say said, I actually don't know. Let's go and ask your grandmother. It happens that the, the grandmother, the mother of this lady, was in the same town. So they go to her and she says, ah, I don't know. That's what my mother used to do. So they went, they decided, all the, the three ladies decided to go to the great grandmother who was still alive. Well, the great grandmother, who was now not as mobile, <laughs> had the story. She burst into serious laughter. And the three ladies were saying, why are you laughing? Say, don't you understand, she told the grandmother, who was her daughter. Don't you understand that you were born during the difficult years and money was difficult to come by? So our, our utensils were limited and, you have, and it was difficult to put everything into the, into the container. So we cut in order for things to fit in the container. You mean you do it? How could you do such a foolish thing? And they all burst into laughter. No, being creative means you don't do things without knowing why you are doing them. And why we must do them the same way others have done. You may think you are respecting them, but they will burst into laughter to hear that you do things the same way and your circumstances are not like their circumstances. So, we are learning that there was, there was instructions give, given on how to make items of worship. There's a pattern the Lord had shown to Moses, which the people, the experts, were supposed to replicate. And we are saying that similarly, there are certain parameters within which our creativity must be actually limited. However, having said that you can be creative, if it's going to be something that involves many people, don't be creative and become offensive. Even if it was, it was, it is within the parameters that Moses was shown. If it's going to make people unable to participate in what is a group activity, it will not be, you need to ask yourself, is it worth it? So that's why I would encourage any church to <coughs> divide its singing time, I don't want to call it worship time, singing time, so that you have one third of the time singing traditional way of worship. One third of the time, these new creative ways that are within the pattern the scriptures allow. That way, 
the, the older people and the younger people have both been represented in the group activity. The one that, that is remaining depends on who is the leader that particular day, a leader of our worship, a leader of our group meeting. But it's not good to make people totally ignored and yet they are still part of the worship. They are still part of the group activity. Be creative, but also let the decisions of how you create be participative, considerate of everybody. So it's an, an important thing to hear. The lampstand was made exactly like the pattern the Lord has shown Moses. I like the word exactly because it uh, does show our, lim our limitation in creativity. Exactly. Are there things in your life that are not exactly like the scriptures say should be done? For example, you want to do a wedding. Do you want to just pick, pick a girl and because the two of you are agreed, you just start things together. You start sleeping together. And you say you are married. Is that the pattern we see in the Bible? Is that what is happening at the canal of Galilee? When Jesus attends that wedding and does a miracle? Is that what James is saying when he's saying when you have something important, you call the elders? That certainly is not a pattern that is... In the mount that Moses was shown in the mountain. So in being creative, you must ask yourself, am I fitting in my creativity? Am I fitting doing things exactly like the scriptures demand? So it will be important whether it's you're talking about your wedding or even the way you bring up your children or even the way you behave as girl boyfriend before the before the wedding, are there things you are doing that are not exactly as well, the pattern that was shown in the mountain? The way you run your business, the way you work as an employee, are you doing things exactly as per the pattern the scriptures have given? We do not see a retirement age in the scriptures. For, for people generally. In other words, people work to death. If you're an artist, you work until you died or became too weak to do it. If you're a king, you work until you are too old to rule. You are whoever. So the idea about a retirement age is more for employer-employee. That surely this guy has worked for you long enough. He should have a pension scheme that allows him not to continue working in his old age. He should enjoy himself. But scripturally speaking, there's no age you reach where you are free to stop serving the Lord. And it's important for you to understand that there's no time you reach when you become idle. The Englishman, I think, was right. An idle mind is the devil's workshop. And an old man or an old woman who is idle is likely to become a menace to the children and grandchildren because they themselves don't have something to wake up to. They just are idle. Give me that. Do that. It will become a total disturbance. So as long as your body functions are okay, it is important at whatever age to see what you can do. There are certain things Obviously, you will not do because your physical body cannot allow you. Maybe you cannot become uh, a Kipchoge running. Not at that age, in your 80s. But there are things you can do. And it will be good that you actually do them. Because clearly, the pattern that we have in the scriptures is you work until you are called home. But there's, um, there's a specific group of people that are not free to, to not retire. They are called priests. 
We are told this in Numbers chapter 8. This is how the lampstand was made. It was made of hammered gold, is what we, we have seen before, and is made according to the patterns, exactly the pattern the Lord had given to Moses. But then in verse 25, in the same chapter, Numbers 8, we read, but at the age of 50, they must retire from their regular service and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, but they themselves must not do the work. This then is how you are to assign the responsibilities to the Israelites. Whereas everybody else is free to work until their bodies cannot cope with work, the people who are called priests, when they are too young, I think below the, that day, they are not welcome to do certain priestly duties. After the age of 50, they are not welcome. But please note, it is not that they retire from all service. It is that they retire from certain type of service that is sacrificing the priestly duties of sacrificing so at the age of 50 they must retire from the regular service and work that is the specific duties that had been listed as being given to priests that's what they are actually going to retire from yes you can retire from certain things, but you are not free not to work. Just look again at Numbers chapter 8, verse 26. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, but they themselves must, do, must not do the work. They then is how you are to assign the, the responsibilities of the Levites. What are we learning? We are learning that um, even after you are said to be retired, you are still expected to assist the people with the responsibility now of doing priestly duties, the ones below 50. You know, you, na you now just become an assistant of those people. I don't, that's, I don't know whether that is, that is what we do. Do you, as a, as a pastor, want to move away from being the senior pastor and become an assistant pastor in your old age? Because that's what they are being told. They have been the main priests. Now they move aside. And the former senior pastor so to say, becomes just one of the assistants where your senior pastor tells you, please pray or please do this. You are no longer in charge. Many people don't see that. They, they, they want, once they reach the top, they are the bishop, to do small duties that he is being ordered around by, by a young priest, of, by a young pastor of 25 years, saying, Brother Nganga, can you do this? Brother Nganga, can you do the other? Brother Nganga, can you, you know, that's something that the few can do. But the pattern that we see in the scriptures is of old people becoming assistants to the younger one who now have the main duties. 